Hello, everybody, and welcome to King of the Castle. This game comes highly recommended from a couple of buddies and from Twitch chat. It's a Twitch chat participation game in which they will use social deception in an attempt to overthrow my monarchy. Let's give it a go. My monarch name is Bear. Dynasty name, Bear Pile. Monarch Bear of the Bear Pile Dynasty. Your monarch uses he, him, King Bear. Yes. Let's begin. I'm going to play on Twitch. Got the Twitch extension installed. Good to go there. We choose three regions. All right, let's give a quick rundown of these guys. The Barons are brash rural lords famous for their belligerence and fondness for hunting. I mean, that's a no-brainer based on the pun alone. The Chiefs are honorable warriors renowned for their pagan religion and prowess in combat. Taffy, a renowned warrior as well, saying hello to everybody and then quickly running away. The Counts are ruthless aristocrats steeped in secrecy. Allegations of forbidden rituals are unproven. The Grandies are impassioned duelists known for their strict adherence to honor, etiquette, and the Ninth God. The Patricians, wealthy seafaring merchants noted for their cleverness, skill in negotiation, and ornate masks. I do feel like Counts of the East is pretty fitting for us. Hmm... Well, I don't want to have to choose between the north and the south, so I suppose it'll be the coast. The patricians. Let's do it. Your nobles may now join via Twitch chat with exclamation point join followed by pronoun. Ex or for example, exclamation point join she. Players can join mid-game and their wealth and region are saved in continued games. So there you go. You can see names beginning to populate our regions here. Feel free to join up. That's neat. I believe you guys can customize your uh, your appearance as well for your noble. So that's fun. We'll give this a couple minutes here. Oh, you have to buy the game to customize. Okay, okay. So yeah, if you own the game, then you're able to customize. Otherwise... I think it'll just generate it randomly for you. I did actually spend a little bit of time. I I know, I can't believe it either. I customized the character. I made this guy. This is my little bear tab. Look, I, I mean, we're, we're dead on, right? Look at this. I just put my face over his, actually. I don't know why I'm squinting so much, but there you go, you get it. When are you going to buy those clothes, though? That should be my streaming attire, really. I'm with you on that. It really does resemble the automaton you created for your bare self. Yeah. One to one. Alright, looks like we might be full. I think it might just be 18 per region here. Last call if you'd like to join up. If it is indeed just working out this way, that'd be pretty convenient. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think you have to sign up. I'm pretty sure you can just join via chat. I don't think there's anything required but that. Again, if you don't know how to do it, exclamation point and join, followed by your pronoun of choice. And that should get you in the list here. Oh, man, if we could have 20 on each team, that'd be great. One more. Perfect. Begin game. Nailed it. All right. Here we go. King of the Castle Primer. Acquire an heir, then complete your ambition to win. Your first reign will likely end in disaster, heavy as the head that wears the crown. Keep an eye on the region's schemes. If they pass all their stages, they'll win the game. Be careful of the region's defiance stat. If it gets too high, the regions may rebel against you. To win, pass all three stages of your scheme. Each stage requires you to get stats to certain levels, which are affected in votes. How you vote is up to you for your region's scheme to stop other schemes or for the good of the kingdom. If your defiance stat is high enough, you can rebel. This pauses your scheme and is risky, especially if you have low military. 
Each season, you'll get three events to play. Click on one to get started. Cool. Okay, so uh, for those wondering, this is my very first time with the game as well, so you're learning right along with me here. Um, looks like I can zoom in on this. Oh, look at that. Kind of a two and a half, half D situation going on. I like that. Looks like we got th these three here. The Path to Victory, Council Introduction, and Coronation. Oh, I see. Okay. This is your monarch, the streamer character. They'll appear in most stories, but not all. These are the kingdom stats. If any of them are zero at the start of a season, the game will end. I'm going to go ahead and move my face just a smidge here as well so you guys can see that stuff clearly there. That should be good. These are the region stats. Stats determine which events are generated. Oh, sorry, hold on. I just want to make sure I... Right, so I can't let any of these reach zero. There we go. If defiance is higher than both authority and stability, a region can trigger a rebellion. This will pause their scheme and as risky as military is low and scroll through the full list of nobles and their wealth here. Take a peek at that. There you guys are. Cool. I can scroll down through the counts, the barons. Oh, and I can hover over you and see your individual baron. Count Zero Quello of the East. Lord Patrician Ariel RSA. This is neat. Just this alone is fun. Count Warzone Vincent. Baroness It's Amy. Very nice. Very nice. Again, feel free to join if you're just uh, joining us here. Exclamation point join followed by your pronoun to join the game. Now that you're king, your first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. Your nobles hail from all across the kingdom, the desolate east, the wealthy coast, and of course, the bleak march. All right, I'm not going to lie. I feel obligated to introduce myself to the barons first. Hail and well met, my liege. Under your leadership, we'll whip this kingdom into shape. Hmm? That's Baron John the Mon. That's a good Twitch name. Thank you, Gamal, for the pin message there. Let's introduce ourselves to the Counts of the East. In honor to finally make your acquaintance, Your Majesty, may you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. Thank you, Count Neurotic. I certainly intend to. Lady Patrician NP40. A pleasure, Your Esteemed Highness. I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. Neat mask, NP. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices as the nobles argue with each other and demand your favor. If you could just go ahead and simulate the rabble for me in chat real quick. Rabble, rabble, rabble. You sigh and sit back. Is this what the council is like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne at all costs. I demand the king's favor. Very good, very good. Coronation. Your Majesty, I've scheduled your coronation to take place in a week's time. Why the hurry? To delay any longer would make the nobles restless. And when nobles get restless, they take their daggers and look for the nearest back. Well, we wouldn't want that, I suppose. As is tradition, the council will decide what happens at your coronation. But it's my coronation! This isn't an absolute monarchy, your majesty. Everything has to be run past a council vote, even this. Well, shit. Shall we call the nobles in? I guess so. Certain choices will change stats. Some choices that do so will indicate this change here. Not all choices that change stats have these indicators, and they do not show the region affected. These are the upcoming choices your nobles will vote on. Each of these may change stats in some way. The monarch can change how a vote is run with a law. You may use one law per vote. Try using your veto on one option you dislike. When the vote opens, nobles vote using the command exclamation point, uh, exclamation point vote, followed by the choice letter. The monarch may close the vote anytime after all nobles have voted. 
or the timer hits zero. Okay. Let's see here. What kind of coronation should be held for the new king? A, host a lavish parade with jugglers and fountains of wine. B, invite foreign dignitaries and show off our wealth. C, throw the king into the river. I'm afraid to start the vote already. D, outdated traditions. There's no need for a coronation at all. Let's see. Well, I would like to veto throw the king into the river real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that's not an option. And, uh, yeah, I'll start the vote with that. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I know that would have been a lot of fun to begin. But that does feel like the, the strategic move for me at the moment. Exclamation point vote followed by your selection. And there it is. Oh, it is close enough, though. I think I'm going to let a few more stragglers in. All right, that'll do. Invite foreign dignitaries and show off our wealth. There it is. Oh, look at this. I was hoping this would work, too. Hover over your banner here, and you can see your, your noble along with your vote. Love it. Very into this so far. This shows which stat has been changed and how much by. Treasury is now 1,200. Okay. Dignitaries arrive from all corners of Celeste Ath. And it's only appropriate you show off. The trained eagle drops a ruby-encrusted crown atop your head as you stand on a golden podium. The odd crowd includes such influential figures as the Dukes of Sal, the Princes of Tavalin, and even a pearl bearer from Atesh. Lucrative trade deals are struck at the evening's feast. And there you can see the results for the uh, for the various groups there. Congratulations on your newfound wealth, barons and counts. And patricians, actually. Only the Grand Pensionary of Kurth is not in attendance. The Republic, after all, is fundamentally opposed to the very concept of monarchy. Zononymous! I think with the 16 months, welcome back in. Bear hugs, please, for him. I'll come back into the pile, buddy. The Monarch must acquire an heir and complete their ambition to win the game. A spouse is useful, but not necessary. We're just going to make sure that sentence is heard within context. Complete your ambition before a scheme or rebellion usurps you or before you lose all authority slash treasury slash stability. Your Majesty, the first few years of your reign are the most difficult. You're new and unproven. The nobles of the council will scheme against you, hoping to kick you off the throne and put their own puppet claimant in your place. These fools couldn't scheme their way out of a paper bag. Better kings than you have been toppled by their treacherous nobles, your majesty. To defeat their schemes, you must secure an heir and prove that you are worthy of the crown by completing an ambition. My question is this. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? What is my goal? Let's find out. As a conqueror, peacekeeper, as the greatest king who ever lived. I don't even have to read the rest. You're the type who likes to build lots of statues of yourself, aren't you? I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving your authority as much as possible. Once you have an heir, I'll return to discussing how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, your majesty. Now that you've played all events, advance the game by clicking end season. You can even, like, see on the map all the different places they were referring to. How fun. They've got their own little world here. I love the way this zooms in. It's making me very happy. The little bouncy boats. 
The frozen wastes. Looks a bit like the UK, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit. Anyway, here we go. Each region will now vote for one of three randomly selected schemes. Schemes are made up of three stages with specific stat requirements. Passing all three scheme stages places the region's claimant on the throne, winning the game. Victor of the R. Baker bloodline, legendary marcher prodigy, stands before a blazing hearth, yelling at full volume. She could go ahead and scream for me. When have the barons of the march backed down from a fight? Never! I know you'll do whatever it takes to put me, your rightful king, on the throne. What scheme should the barons pursue to overthrow the new king and place their preferred claimant, Victor, on the throne? Hmm. Oh, I think y'all are voting for this one. Yeah, right. This is for the barons to decide. Doppelganger. Modernization. Or propaganda. I'll give y'all a few more seconds to vote here. Again, I believe only the barons are allowed to vote on this one. Ooh, it's close. We got all the barons' votes in? How many barons we got, actually? Hold on, let me make sure. Does it say the total amount somewhere? If it's 92 nobles and it's evenly split, that means we got, what, like 30-ish? Eh, it's close enough. Voting is closed. Yeah, it allows me to continue whenever I want reality. The countdown timer, I think, is mostly just there to encourage people to vote more quickly. They have chosen propaganda. The goal is to lower stability. All right, then. The barons plan to persuade the population that only a charismatic general can protect them. First, the common folk must be afraid. To advance their scheme, the barons must lower stability to four or less in three seasons. So that's this statistic right here, Barons. You're trying to get this uh, one lower, which seems like it's pretty doable. Zemule of the Wolfwall Dynasty. Eccentric reformed cultist leans delicately on a podium, whispering carefully. Zemule, representative of the Counts. My fellow Counts, in ancient times, the East was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days of glory, but not while the false king bear wears the crown. What scheme should the counts pursue to overthrow the new king and place their preferred claimant, Zemuel, upon the throne? Subterfuge, also aiming to lower stability. Intimidation, raise stability. Or ascension, the goal being to lower their own faith. Overwhelming support. Got a bunch of deviants among the counts. No question there, dude. Bunch of heathens, absolutely. Aiming to ascend. Well, at least you are of a like mind, counts. That much can certainly be said of you. The Counts plan to induct the king into their secret cult and offer him immortality in exchange for the throne. I mean, it's going to work. I'm not going to lie. If you present me that deal, trade offer, you receive immortality, we receive the throne. Fucking deal, dude. First, they must reduce the power of the Eastern Church. To advance their scheme, the Counts must lower their faith to four or less in three seasons. Cyril of the Cleason family, eccentric coastal pol political fixer, scribbles with a well-used quill on a hardwood desk, speaking calmly. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of King Bear. Something must be done. What scheme should the patricians pursue to place their preferred claimant Cyril on the throne? Raise their own trade with the monopoly? Lower the treasury and conspiracy. Corruption. Lower the authority. 
A little bit more evenly split here for the patricians of the coast. Looks like they are pretty set in the decision, at least, though. Give them a few more seconds here for the stragglers among the uh, among the patricians. Does look like the monopoly has taken the vote. Looking to raise their own trade. The patricians plan to privatize this entire damn kingdom, capitalist swine. First, they must build up their industry. To advance their scheme, the patricians must raise their trade to five or more in four seasons. Here you can review the region's schemes and their claimants. When you have an heir, they will appear on the right of this page. If your reign ends abruptly, the nobles will vote for the next monarch. This vote is between the two regions with the highest combined stats and your heir if you have one. Your Majesty, these upstarts are saying they have a right to your throne. No doubt the nobles are already scheming to crown their region's preferred claimant. Little penguin. Thank you for the 49 months. Welcome on back in. Appreciate it. Bear hugs, please. All right, so another quick review here. Barons of the March, you're looking to lower the kingdom's stability to four or less in three seasons. Counts of the East, what is a mule? The embittered step uncle. Wow. Lower your own faith to four or less in three seasons. Or Cyril, long lost nibbling? Not sure what that is. Raise your own trade to at least five in four seasons. There you go. Here you can adopt a new law that alters how voting is run. You'll be able to adopt more once a year at the end of winter. You can only adopt one new law at a time and have a maximum of three laws to use. It's the gender neutral for niece and nephew. Oh, okay, cool. I never heard that before. By royal decree, we can tweak the laws governing how the council votes. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain plus 500 personal wealth, plus one stability if more than 50% of nobles vote for any one option. Ooh. -hoo. Sorry, barons. That might be... Uh... That might be pretty tempting there. The timer is set to 15 seconds and the vote will automatically close once the timer is over. Oh man. I'm not gonna lie, initially, I had ruled that one out in my head because I was like, no, that's no fun. We wanna let people play. But if I force people to pay attention. <laughs> oh man, that's kind of funny. Now nah, let's. I like the call for unity. That certainly seems beneficial to me. I, I can imagine the uh, the counts and the patricians are certainly shooting for that as well. Right, that'll work. So these are the current laws. I can take a voting option off the table. I can make my preferred vo voting option, which gets one extra vote, or I can just call for unity. Although I suppose these are all in effect at the same time. Right, yeah, I think so. Okay. But I think I can only do one of those two, first two things because those um, impact the same thing. I suppose we'll find out in a moment, though. And only once per season, right? Right. Oh, it is. You just pick one for each vote. Okay. Okay, got it. Right. So, three events today. One in each region. We'll start uh, with Gossamer Shield. Countess Baby Hippo. Your Highness, heed my plea. The great tragedy of our time has befallen the East. You ran out of capes? Worse even than that, I fear. An order of once great knights has fallen into disrepute. It's the order of the Gossamer Shield, Your Grace. They were once the greatest of the knightly orders to serve the Counts. Their virtues were extolled by bards across the land. Tales that would make a troll weep. But they've been brought low. They're working as glorified bounty hunters for the coast. This is a stain on the honor of the East. Nonsense, says noble patrician Airy. Our military has suffered some setbacks recently, so we hired Gossamer Security to keep order. For a pretty penny, I might add. Ah, 
The coast military is now mediocre, and some patrician's wealth has decreased. Oh no, your money. Gossamer security has been solving the problems we want solved and kicking the buttocks we want kicked. Blood and stars, Gossamer security, how has it come to this? These are knights, not mercenaries. And they need a reminding of a little thing called chivalry. Please, your highness, I beg the council to be reasonable. Should the order of the Gossamer shield be recalled and reformed to its former glory? Option A, recall the order and restore its courtly dignity. Invest in Gossamer security to help protect the coast. Hire the order to join the palace watch. Or ignore the situation. Well, I'm certainly first going to be looking towards stability. Let's see here. Hmm. Honestly, it's kind of looking like I need to veto one already. Taking a, Simply taking away the option of reducing stability here does seem pretty critical. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now it is time to vote. Should the Order of the Gossamer Shield be recalled and reformed to its former glory? Option B, invest in Gossamer security to help protect the coast. This will decrease my overall treasury will increase and decrease defiance in uh, one or more regions, I believe is what that means. And then this will increase trade, I believe, for everyone. Hire the order to join the palace watch to decrease our treasury and increase authority. Ignore this situation. Increase the military, increase defiance, and decrease authority. Oh, boy. This is kind of on me now, isn't it? Well, it is mostly you guys, I guess, determining the votes, but... Well, it looks like we're hiring the order to join the palace watch, which is certainly not what I wanted. Although, that does give me authority, I just realized. Which is helpful. Hire the order to join the palace watch. And I can see which nobles voted for it. Oh, well. I might utilize that ability later on to determine who I can deem trustworthy. When they arrive in the palace, the knights of the Gossamer Shield turn out to be petty, argumentative, and ruthless. Worlds away from Countess Baby Hippo's romantic vision. But they are very, very efficient. On the first day, they catch a thief sneaking into your kitchens and beat him to a pulp. Efficient indeed. As for the existing watch, they're intimidated by the newcomers who take delight in mocking their skill during sparring matches. Yo, Double Taco! Good news. Thank you for the tier freaking three for a hundred and freaking five months. And congrats on the new gig. Bear hugs, please. Did raise authority there. Taking a quick peek at the noble list. Can check where y'all are at. Not a lot of change so far. Again, feel free to join at any time. Exclamation point join followed by your pronoun. Yeah, I'm going to need to get that treasury up, hopefully. Now that you're king, you need personal protection. Well, I could plunge my sword into your heart right now, could I not? Please don't hurt me. You need an honor guard to keep you safe from such dangers. Unfortunately, this is a political decision. What are my options? Each region offers a selection of elite guards. It counts with Knights of the Order of the Drowned Rose... The patricians with champion gladiators from the arena, and the barons offer a squad of battle-hardened vet veteran soldiers. Think carefully, your majesty. These guards' loyalties will be divided between you and their region. Of course, you could just hire foreign mercenaries. They'd be loyal to coin above all. Hmm. Tell me about the Eastern Knights. The Order of the Drowned Rose are highly respectable. They'll understand palace etiquette, but it's been years since they fought an actual battle. 
They mostly write poems these days. That seems bad. A gang of low-born crooks who've turned themselves into celebrities through their skill at chopping other people to bits. They're vain and selfish. Their skill in battle is undeniable, but can you trust them? Tell me about the veterans of the march. These soldiers have fought more battles than they've had hot dinners. They'll be uncouth, no doubt, and won't adapt well to life in the palace, but they're loyal and tough as nails. I've made my decision. Well, clearly I can't hire the foreign mercenaries. Hmm. We give actual quality, sire. Who do you speak for, Blood Magpie? Baron Blood Magpie. Vouches for the march. Let it be so. I will make the arrangements at once. The March Defiance is now loyal. The coast in the east. Now aloof! Gulp. The veterans arrive a few weeks later. They march into the throne room in perfect formation before lining up behind your throne, hands on their sword hilts. Each soldier sports a bigger scar than the last, until the last soldier is simply a giant walking scar. Disturbing. Your Majesty, it's our honor to invite you to the Lord's Hunt next year. The hunt will be taking place in late spring, so keep your schedule clear. Hmm. What is the Lord's Hunt? Only the most important event in the March's social calendar. All the barons embark on a marvelous two-week hunting trip. To refuse our invitation would be a dishonor, Your Majesty. Come along. Bring your whole retinue. You might bag a big one, hmm? Yeah, all right. Of course, why wouldn't you? Look forward to it. It is exciting. Well, that was eventful. Season concluded. Nobles can use their wealth to bid on any building in any region, each of which affects a stat. Cool. This is done through an auction where only the two most funded buildings are chosen. When the auction is open, nobles can fund with the following command. Exclamation point fund A, or whichever building you choose, X where X is the personal wealth. So if you wanted to contribute 100 to the cathedral, you would type exclamation point fund space E space 100. Okay. When you're ready, hit start auction to begin. All right. Cool. So quick overview then. Funding the library increases stability. Funding the prison decreases stability. Funding the Observatory decreases faith. Funding the Thieves' Guild decreases trade. Funding the Cathedral increases faith. Funding the Bazaar increases trade. Funding is now open. Only the top two funded buildings will be constructed. Here's the overview of richest nobles. I'll also go ahead and pull up this noble list over here so you can get an overview there as well. It is unfortunate. I mean, I feel, I feel like I can probably point it out without too much concern considering how likely it is to actually happen. But yeah, the Baron's got a got a nice draw on this one. Looks like the uh, observatory is going to make its way in as well. Pretty good for the counts too. And there it is. Prison constructed. Otaku gal, dumping the entirety of the coffers into it. 
or his own Vincent, massive con contribution to the observatory. Each region has completed its goal after the first season. That's not good for Bear. Get shit on, my lord, yeah? Indeed. In the twisty passages of your castle, you can avoid your advisors, the nobles, even the spy master. But there's one person you can't avoid. Yourself! Oh, your mother. Why haven't you found a spouse yet? It's been almost a year. I'm, I've been busy. You better find the time. Don't worry, I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What's your preference? Men, women, or do you not mind? Annie. I'll send out messengers to the most influential noble families in the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. Bring me back a person. The treasury is almost empty, your highness. Where the hell did it all go? I couldn't possibly say, your majesty. Perhaps you've been spending a little too freely. I only bought one thing! Apart from raising taxes, we have precious few options. You could get a bank loan or sell off the crown jewels. Or perhaps crack open some of your predecessor's tombs. Most were buried with piles of gold, or so I've heard. That sounds like fun. I own the mint, don't I? Make more coins. Oh man, that couldn't possibly have any negative repercussions. Up it by 10,000? That's hilarious. Let's see. Hmm. Sell off some of the royal jewelry to wealthier nobles. Lowers authority. That's not really what I want. Hmm. Take a hefty loan from Salvant and Gall Bank. I think it's time to crack open some tombs, man. That buried gold isn't doing anyone any good, is it? Time to desecrate some graves. Treasury bumped up. You order the royal mausoleums dug into and looted. The result is quite the bounty. Gold masks, heaps of coins, precious jewels. Not everyone is as practical as your treasurer, however. The church denounce you as a grave robber. Nobles and peasants alike are disgusted by your greed. It's honestly like a fair assessment of the situation. It's pretty fucked up, dude. They're now grumbling in the east and on the coast. Stability unstable. You remember those hired knights? Or remember we hired those Eastern Knights to join the Palace Watch, the Order of the Cobweb Seal or whatever? Something's up. They're flashing far too much cash considering what we pay them. One of them has bought their horse a full set of gold teeth. That's, I, I can't even fault them for that. Having, having conceived of that alone is impressive. They're getting far too big for their boots. Claim my scars were assigned and lost too many battles for their liking. As you see, they're not fitting in. But they are doing a great job keeping order in the city. And they're asking for their own barracks to keep them separate from the rabble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Blanda! Thank you for the gifted sub. Bear gifts, bear hugs, welcome on in. Oh, most pleasing. That sounds like a good way to honor our time or our fine order. Some choices have uncertain outcomes called challenges. These can either be random or based on a stat. The percentage cho shows the chance of success. Hmm. Should the Gossamer Shield Knights be given special treatment? Build a new wing of the palace for the Gossamer Knights. No. Refuse to coddle them. Does decrease my authority, unfortunately. Investigate where they're getting their funds. Or pay Countess Baby Hippo to teach them about chivalry. Hmm. That's an interesting option. 
trying to decide what law of the land to apply to this. I think I might go for a call for unity. Because I'm thinking a lot of people are going to want to roll the dice on C. Let's see what happens. Oh, not going to happen, apparently. We'll show you, Bear. Evenly split between all four choices. You fool. Oh, man. Wow. Look at this. The Count's not super excited about this one, unsurprisingly. Looking like they were trying to help out their fellow Countess here, but... We will indeed be investigating where they get their funds. A combined effort. Between the Barons and Patricians. You have the Spymaster eavesdrop around the palace. She knows all sorts of nooks and crannies to slip around unseen. Authority challenge succeeded. Hopefully she'll uncover something soon. All right. So yeah, I believe that increased stability, right? That's good. That's very helpful for me. I'm going to need to get that authority up as well. Here you can set different levels of tax or bribes for each region in your kingdom, potentially punishing some while rewarding others. Balance the needs of your treasury against defiance changes. Remember, if a region's defiance is higher than both authority and stability, they can rebel. All nobles gain wealth here, but one region gains extra wealth with a trade bonus. Regions with a higher trade stat are more likely to get a trade bonus. The barons sell a weapon cache to the Tatterlands, 500 wealth, and the other nobles gain 200. Cool. Hmm. So we can either make it a cruel tax, increase the defiance, gain treasury, and remove wealth from the barons. Barons look away. Common tax. Or we can bribe. Decrease our treasury and increase the wealth of various members of the region. Well, all the members of the region, I guess. Hmm. We're your honor guard. Valid point. I don't know if I want my honor guard to be the wealthiest in the land either, though. That seems like a, a dangerous concentration of power. Defiance is now aloof. That seems a little better balanced. It'd be a shame if they dropped their dagger in your back, sire. It would be a, a true inconvenience, wouldn't it? Speaking of undercutting. I wanted to speak to you today about a delicate matter, your most august majesty. Never heard that before. It concerns the iron trade. You might have to explain a bit further. Well, the East is vast and full of natural resources, reserves, iron being one of the most bountiful. The Counts make a killing off it. Of course, who needs iron more than the Barons? How else would they make their world-famous weapons and armor? The march or steel industry practically relies on good relations with the Counts. Traditionally, we patricians have facilitated this trade, making sure that a fair deal was reached on both sides. Yet now the Barons buy from the Counts directly. They're cutting us out of the deal. You can't let them get away with it. Yeah, you're right. That's despicable. I gotta get the patricians to side with me a little more. And you'll call the council together to deal with this. 
Actually, I don't think I will. What if I just pay you to forget about this? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I don't want to increase the trade of the patricians, though. That doesn't sound very good. In fact, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I will. What a waste of time. Aggrieved! Oh, boy. Uh-oh. You allow the regions to do business as they like. This means the patricians will lose a grip on their monopoly, of course, which is certainly helpful for everybody. But that's no concern of yours. Some patricians' wealth has decreased. Oh, but they're mad. They're pissed. Treachery revealed! You recall the latest edition of the palace watch, your majesty. The Eastern Knights, yes. They wanted us to build the barracks in the royal palace so they wouldn't clash with the rest of the staff. And they had a little too much cash to splash. They tried to pass information about your activities to the Gaunt of Tavallon. How dare they! They're loyal to money rather than, their, rather than to their king. The Gaunt must pay very well. I caught the letters before they were sent, but this is a concern. They'll seriously undermine you unless you do something. When you bring this discovery to the council, shock ripples through the chamber. Baby Hippo gasps in horror. Baby Hippo? Baby Hippo? Please, Your Grace, this must all be a misunderstanding. No Knight of the East would dream of betraying their king so cruelly. Hmm. How should the council deal with these knights turned spies? Shall we execute the treacherous knights? Certainly increasing defiance amongst the barons. Execute them and Countess Baby Hippo for causing all of this. Or simply put them in prison. Hmm. I shall select A as the monarch's vote to execute the treacherous knights. How do we vote? Type exclamation point vote on either A, B, or C. Look at the division here. The counts doing their very best. Oh boy. Execute them and Countess Baby Hippo for causing all of this. My goodness. Defiler Zero and uh, Peiko may have something to say to the remainder of the counts along with Taladian. But here we go. Voting is closed. We execute these knights turned spies. You have the Knights of the Gossamer Shield beheaded at dawn the following day, along with Countess Baby Hippo's stability challenge succeeded as well. Authority is now iron fisted. Peasants of the capital flock to watch, screaming in excited horror each time the axe falls. No, I'm innocent, I swear by Xenia's ashes. Funk. Holy shit, you're just dead as hell on a 20% roll. Goodbye, baby hippo. I mean, you're still there in the list, but that'll show you, says the peasant. Countess baby hippo has freaking died. Oh, and apparently has joined the, wait, what? He's joined the council. Oh, baby hippo the second. You're now Baby Hippo the Saints, their child! It's the heir. They even look younger. Well, maybe I'm making that up, but... Oh, that's wonderful. But the defiance of the Counts is now aggrieved. 
That is pretty great, dude. I found three potential matches for you. One eligible young candidate from each of the three kingdoms, or each of the kingdom's three regions. Choose wisely, you'll be securing a powerful alliance. And a partner for life to have and hold, don't forget. I guess. Your mother leads you to the Great Hall, where she's arranged three portraits on easels. For now, each is covered by a cloth. I don't even get to meet them? There's no time for sentiment, you just need a match that befits your station and suits your political needs. She whisks away the cloth from the first portrait. This is Matilda, the eldest daughter of the Eastern Fenrir Spawn Dynasty. Forgive the snooty expression, I'm sure that's caused by an errant brush stroke. She's lost half the family fortune in the gambling halls, unfortunately. She's gotten some trouble with the Inquisition a while ago, but it didn't come to anything. That's going to be uh, more than likely a pass based on that second bit. From the coast, we have Erethus, the wealthy heir to Lady Patrician Teresa Sheho's estate. I mean, just look at him. He's gorgeous. And apparently, he's got a silver tongue, too. Yes, that mask is beautiful. He recently gave away half his fortune to the church, much to everyone's surprise. And apparently he has a dark side, though I don't know much more about that. He certainly sounds nice. And finally we have the March's Offering. Katya, scion of the prestigious Skylove Ian bloodline. She's known for her blunt honesty. The kind of honesty that makes you enemies. Like most of the barons, her great passion is hunting. No beast is safe from her crossbow. Well, she might actually be helpful on the great hunt coming up, actually, huh? Give her half a chance and she'll expound at length on how we should improve the lot of the peasants. Sounds like a laugh. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. Hmm. Which of these do you wish to marry? I mean, I'm not going to lie. This, the, the choice here is pretty clear. I'll make the arrangements. The barons are now loyal. The east and coast are now mutinous. I'll make the arrangements. Let's do this, barons. While the king settles into his young reign, a general has risen in the march. The indomitable Baron Victor. General, fantastic news. We're ready to move forward with the plan. The kingdom is in such a state that commoners are begging for someone to save them. All we need is a suitable boogeyman to get them really riled up. The Ashmedian Empire will do, I should think. After all, they've always coveted our lands, especially in the march. And how would our dear king stop them with the kingdom in such a state? Good thinking, General. While your campaign warns of the Ashmedian threat and proposes a march or defense, we will build an army to back your words. For the next stage of the Baron scheme, their stat goal is to have their highest military, or the highest military, in three seasons. There you go. In a tiny village far to the east, two counts meet in a derelict tavern. No one dares even glance in their direction. Another priest left my estate today. He said there was no sense preaching to the truly lost. I've heard the same across the east. We're no longer trapped under the church's thumb. Now we must not falter. If the king grows proud, we can offer him the ultimate reward. Immortality. For the next stage of their scheme, the counts must raise authority to five or more in four seasons. All right. Time for a new law. Plus 600 treasury if the nobles vote for the selected option. If the nobles vote otherwise, minus 200 treasury. Well, I know that's never going to freaking happen. Swing votes. After voting, nobles can change their minds and vote for a different option. Or anonymous voting. How nobles choose to vote is hidden from the monarch's view. Absolutely taking swing votes. Let's get rid of monarch's vote. Swing votes sounds like a lot of fun. Chaos for sure. Ah, the Lord's Hunt has arrived, and the Royal Wedding. 
Oh, and a plague of rats. That sounds like fun. Well, let's go get married first, and then we'll deal with the plague. Your wedding to Katya is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. It feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Katya at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I changed my mind. I can't do this. There's no benefit to it. Yeah, we'd probably go ahead and... Say yes. I pronounce you as king and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, a dance. Your new wife, Katya, delivers a short but heartfelt toast, expressing a wish to get to know you better. Defiance decreased across the kingdom, authority raised, stability now teetering. Yay, yay. By the time you find yourself alone with Katya, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. I feel that. I must profess, I'm glad that's over. We can finally talk openly to each other now. What do you mean? The demands of life in the royal court don't quite agree with me. So many liars, lickspittles, and flatterers. I don't know how you stand it. Yeah, you get used to it. Right, chat? I suppose you were born into it, weren't you? You had no choice but to get used to it. After finishing the last of the wine, you head to your separate bedchambers. Seems your wife is happy to get, take her time getting to know you. And there we go. No idea what I mean yet. Where is the uh, screen that gives us the overview of the current goals? Did I click something for that? Or does that only show up at a certain time? Is it only represented by these little boxes? I thought there was a screen that you could pull up that, that gave you a little overview. Oh, you can hover over the check marks. Okay, that's nice. So the counts are, of course, looking to keep this authority up there. The barons are trying to have as high of a military as they can get. Or to at least have the highest. And then patricians will indeed be meeting their goal for trade, most likely, anyway. This is a player who has bought Kingdom of the Castle. They can set their own customizations, get access to special outfits, and appear more often in storylines. Cool. Premium Noble. Baron Bejik strides into the council chambers, distraught, waving a dead rat by its tail. The fields and barns of the march are overrun by vermin, and we've no more poison for these horrible things. We can't cope anymore. Can the council help resolve this marcher rat plague? Take that rat and go. The march can handle this alone. Deliver a supply of rat poison. Send them a shipment of cats. Brilliant. Or hire some adventurers to clean out the rodents. Let's see here. Hmm. I suppose it would be nice to decrease the defiance, wouldn't it? Plus, I think people want me to get rid of my own money. Let's see if I can get lucky here. I don't know, man. Like, I can't not call attention to the fact that I'm voting for Call for Unity, right? So, we'll see what happens. Yeah, y'all seem pretty determined not to allow that to take place. To be fair, this is... It's, it's difficult for me to choose which one of these I want to go with. All kind of appealing in their own way. But I guess we're going to send them some cats. Which, I don't know why I'm surprised. Baron Bejik bows to you deeply. I can't thank you enough, my liege. You send a caravan of cats over to the march. By the time they reach their destination, they're both hungry and very angry. The perfect rat-catching mindset. 
Wait to hear what happens. Soon the rats are gone. The following spring, uh, a following springs up around one particularly successful mouser whose nickname is the Colonel. And a bronze statue is put up in his honor. They built a statue for a cat named the Colonel. I don't think that could have possibly had a better outcome. He greatly enjoys sunning himself beside the statue and the townspeople bring him dried fish for luck. I was wrong. It can get better. Whether or not the gifts affect the town's fortunes remains to be seen, but he is a very happy cat indeed. Trade is now opulent for the barons. Wow. I got an achievement for that. Chief Mouser achievement unlocked. After several days riding along muddy roads, you've arrived in the march for the Lord's Hunt. What weapon did you bring for the occasion? Obviously a crossbow. And what animals did you bring to help you catch your prey? A cat named Colonel. Ah, your majesty, pleased you can make it. I see you've brought a, a crossbow. Don't like getting up and close and personal, huh? And you've brought... Is that, is that a cat? Ninth god above. What were you hoping to hunt with that thing? Mice? These woods are teeming with game, your majesty. As the king, it's up to you what we hunt. I, you're going to give me a list of five animals and one of them has a unique name? What the hell do you expect? Are you sure, your majesty? The white heart is said to live in these woods, but it's a rare and elusive beast. They say it's nearly impossible to catch. I'm the streamer! A 1% chance might as well have two zeros after it. Blood Magpie lifts a horn to their lips and blows, producing a sound that scares the birds from the surrounding trees. Let the Lord's hunt commence! You spur your horse on through the undergrowth, your finger resting on the trigger of your crossbow. Your cat has nestled itself in a saddlebag fast asleep. This seems ideal. You ride on and on through the wilderness, searching for a flash of white between the trees. But none is forthcoming. That day you go home disappointed. Do not be dispirited, your majesty. We will try again tomorrow. But the next day you are unlucky again. On the third day you rise early and sally out into the woods. This is your last chance to catch the elusive beast. Tomorrow you must return to the capital. Bear luck. Bear luck. Bear luck. Bear luck. Search for the white heart. Damn it. The sun gets low in the sky. Once again, the legendary white heart has not made an appearance. Never mind, your majesty. It has been many decades since a white heart was caught in these woods. At least no one can fault your ambition. The next day, you begin the long ride back to the capital. The Lord's Hunt was awash, but the barons don't resent you for it. That's the fickle nature of any hunt, they tell you. Well, all right. We gave it a go, right? In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Is it dingy or dingy, I just realized? Dingy. Oh, it's dingy. The coast's economy has never been better. We're making more money than I know what to do with. Money breeds money. I've made a series of investments to improve our profits even more. But what do we do with all this gold? Time to start buying things, of course. Lands, roads, bridges. We'll buy up the whole kingdom piece by piece. But first, the king must be in desperate need of our gold. To advance their scheme, the patricians must lower the treasury to 1,500 or less in two seasons. These upstarts are saying they have the right to the crown. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We must protect the treasury. Yes, indeed. Hope when we get to tax these fools. A giant glass globe filled to the brim with murky water is wheeled before the council. The fishbowl contains Lord Patrician Titanium 710 suspended in liquid. 
He pokes his head above the surface. Your Serene Highness. Glub, glub. A most infuriating circumstance has befallen me. Glub, glub. Can I get you some fish food? This is no laughing matter. I have been cursed by a sea wizard. He inflicted me with these... Hold on, I feel like I gotta... He inflicted me with, the, with these gills, so I can't leave the water for more than a couple minutes. I have to open time and I blew some picturesque beachy life. How is that supposed to know? I demand to arrest this maniac and force him to remove these gills. <laughs> Let it never be said that I wasn't committed to the bit. What should be done about the wizard who gave Lord Patrician gills? Send a squad of coastal soldiers to arrest the wizard responsible. Send a diplomat to politely ask the wizard to reverse the curse. Close down Lord Patrician's tannery. Or titanium's tannery. Or send the wizard a hamper of fine cheeses and a bottle of wine. Hmm. I feel very strongly about my call for unity today. Let's do this, guys. Come on. You know what to do. You know what to do. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm, I'm, come on now. We can get there. Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised not to see more there we go, come on. We're making it happen. I believe in the call for unity! Alright, then we'll have to do. Darn it. Well, that is certainly the uh, result I expected, at least. Close down Lord Patrician Titanium Stannery. After your soldiers close down the tannery and destroy its vats, the nearby beach returns to its former beauty and Lord Patrician Titanium recovers from his curse. Sure, a few hundred jobs are lost, but it's a small price to pay. It does lower the trade of the Patricians as well. Lord Titanium appears in the Council Hall a few days later, back to his old self. Though he has a case of the hiccups that persists for several months. Adorable. Something about bees. Missing bees. Your grace, terrible news from the east. The bees have vanished. All the bees? All of them, all across the east. We counts rely on the bees for our honey trade. But worse, in the east, bees are bringers of good fortune. We look after them, and they look after us. It's a grim omen indeed if they've deserted us. Our peasants are scared that we've offended the bees somehow. We must track them down. How should the council help track down the mysteriously missing bees? Hmm. Bees come and go. Let nature take its course. Send messengers to investigate the other regions. Or ask the peasants if they've noticed anything wrong. Hmm. Well... Makes a lot of sense for me to do this, considering I don't want to allow you guys to remove my authority. Let's see how this fares. Yeah, sorry, Barons. Kinda had to screw you over there. Counts are certainly liking it. Barons are maintaining that military. And there it is. Send messengers to investigate other regions. Couldn't have chosen better myself. The eastern beehives continue to languish, but the Counts are grateful that the Council takes the situation seriously. Messengers ready themselves to traverse the kingdom and find the bees. Surely it shouldn't be too hard to find such a huge swarm. Back from the hunt. 
This game's great. By the way, quick pause and a bear clap for this being a very fun game. Lady Patrician lost gerbil. This has gone on long enough. After yet another hunt, the queen consort shot and killed a rare species of stag found only in the coastal woodlands. That's the fourth this month. We must curtail these hunts. The royals cannot get away with wanton destruction of our countryside. Enough is enough. I demand a vote. You glance at Katya as the nobles assemble for a vote. She shrugs. It's got Reigns vibes for sure, right, D4? I don't think it's the same team. I'm pretty sure it's not the same team, in fact. It was a beautiful stag. Should the royal family be restricted for hunting to hunting within their own lands? Impose restrictions on hunting outside the crown lands in the march. Leave the laws as they are. Liberalize hunting laws to allow for hunting anarchy. Speaking of anarchy, swing votes. Nothing set in stone. Let chaos reign. Change your vote at will. Who knows what'll happen? Although leave the laws as they are certainly seems pretty boring. I'm going to end it as soon as the countdown is done. Done. Impose restrictions on hunting outside the crown lands in the march. My humblest thanks, esteemed nobles. This will benefit all of us, I'm sure. It does lower the defiance of the patricians, thankfully. Oh, their farming has gone up now, and the fertile. Your wife looks on, a barely concealed frown forming on her lips. Yeah, she didn't like that. Well. All right, then. Auction time. Barons can choose between the fortress and the prison to either increase their military or decrease stability. The counts can either increase authority with a monument or decrease faith with an observatory. Patricians can vote for an aqueduct to increase their farming or decrease authority with a theater. Again, to fund here. Exclamation point fun, followed by your selection, followed by the amount you'd like to contribute. And right, so important to note here, I do believe that this military will only go toward the barons. Same can be said of this farming, I believe, and then also this faith that they only go to their respective groups. Ooh, looks like the theater's running away with it. That authority is up there. That's not too surprising. Been locking it down, man. There it is. Authority decreased via the theater. Queen of Sprinkles, biggest contribution. And the fortress has been purchased, increasing the Baron's military. Mellow, the biggest contributor. Well done. There you go. Ooh, about your heir. Your marriage to Katya is not what you'd hoped. She seldom sleeps in your bed, and over breakfast you exchange only a few frosty words before she departs on a hunt. The last thing on your mind is pr procuring an heir, but the needs of the kingdom must prevail. Congratulations are in order. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair. Uh, thank you. I'm very happy. He lied. Your happiness isn't important at all. We don't care. You've done well so far, but something's still missing. An heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard. Or the youngest of your many cousins. I'm pretty sure I have a bastard child lying around somewhere. I plan to adopt a lowborn child from the orphanage. 
The nobles won't be too happy with a lowborn child being elevated to the status of a royal. I urge you to reconsider. I'm doing it, goddammit! I'm sure history will remember you as a champion of the people. If it remembers you at all. I'll make the necessary arrangements. An orphan shall rule these lands. We're going Batman mode. Your Serene Highness, a bard who calls herself the Songstress has been making waves in the coast. Hilarious. Her performances are attracting huge crowds. So huge that there have been brawls and stampedes as people push closer to the stage. There have been no deaths yet, but it's only a matter of time. With every concert, the riots get worse. What can we do to nip this in the bud? What should be done about the growing popularity of the Songstress? Oh my god, it's Beyonce. Yeah, we're basically saying, what should we do about Beyonce? Um, let her be Beyonce? Is that an option? Ensure her shows have adequate security, yeah. Hmm. This is not a matter for the council's attention. Oh my. Hmm. Let's see. You know, I think I'll go... I think I'll go for a call for unity again. I feel like this one is unlikely. Which maybe means that it could happen. Considering that I've thought the other ones were likely. But no, this is pretty evenly split too, isn't it? Boy, I'm starting to regret that call for unity. That That is just not happening. Especially when I call for it. Although apparently... You know, it actually makes perfect sense that the stragglers would decide that this is not a matter for the council's attention. They would be the ones to, to say that. Oh, it's so close to the 50%. Wait, math? Oh, it's so close. Please, I'm begging you. Blessed nobles. Those that may be holding their votes, I, I implore you to consider... That we make this not be a matter for the council's attention, but all right, fine. So be it. Although we have landed upon this conclusion. Very well, I suppose we'll just let this bard continue to stir up chaos on my lands. Now mutinous. Over the next few weeks, the riots around the songstress's, songstress's shows get worse. There are several deaths. What is so special about this woman's music? Motel's on the moon. Think of the nine months. Welcome back in. Appreciate it. The messenger you sent to look for the Count's bees has returned, Your Majesty. We've discovered where they went. They've been seen in the coast. Noble patrician 10-pound towel stamps in, their face swollen and covered with stings. Those damn counts! I bet those I bet they sent those bees of theirs just to trouble us. I did wonder what was going on with your face. Yes, it's terrible! By the ninth, those bees must be destroyed. No one dares to go outside. Our markets are ruined. Seventh, take us. Those bees are our livelihood. If they're killed, they'll bring bad luck to all of us. Then you should have taken better care of them, shouldn't you? What should be done with the escaped bees? Shall we focus on luring the bees back to the east? Shall we destroy the bees in the coast? Or get the church to help heal the peasants? Let's find out. Hmm. They don't need to adjust... Hmm. I want the defiance lowered for the patricians. Hold on. They would want me to destroy the bees. Which would increase defiance for the counts, but decrease defiance for the patricians. Okay. Which means... Sorry, guys. We're killing them bees. 
No, 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 we're not, Bear. <laughs> no, not, not in the least bit surprising. To see zero support for the idea of destroying the bees in the coast. We'll, we'll, we'll take a chance on letting the church help out. What kind of people would murder bees? I probably should have spotlighted those nobles, huh? Yeah, we gotta find out who are the pure evil amongst us. Noble patrician 10 pound towel looks pleased and bows, hurrying away to summon some priests. But even the holiest of priests have their limits. As they're stung more and more, their fervor falters. Eventually, they give up. As coastal villagers cower in their homes, market days are canceled and fields lie un 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 untended. Meanwhile, the counts are silent on the matter. Trade is now dynamic. Farming is now sufficient. The poor, the poor coast. Well, I'm sure the, the other regions are pretty pleased. You have nothing, Lord Bear. I will, will, will make it right. I owe you one, Patricians. Across the kingdom, commoners and nobles alike are now turning to General Victor, who promises to rescue them from the king's weak rule. There are daily parades in the general's honor. A cult of personality begins to form. Commoners are signing up in droves to fight for Victor. His popularity far eclipses the king's. Oh boy. In the Grand Hall of Baron Ares' castle, a number of figures are hunched around the hearth, plodding away. Soon the people will beg us to depose our pathetic king. The general is in place. It's time for the final blow. What's next? How should the barons take over the kingdom and install General Victor as the new king? Should they provoke a civil war and take over the palace for the king's safety? The goal being to raise others' defiance. Or enact a swift and brutal palace coup with the goal being to lower authority. It's a pretty clear decision on the part of the barons. We're gonna provoke a civil war. How delectable. Of course, we must make sure the other nobles are suitably enraged. Can't be seen to have started the whole thing. A simple task. The other regions are eager for another excuse to hate the king. We just need to give them a push. And that's when the general will swoop in to save the kingdom from itself. Ingenious, if I do say so. For the final stage of their scheme, the barons must raise other regions' defiance to a combined total of at least 12, or ensure another region begins a rebellion. If they pass their scheme, they'll win the game. There are some exceptions. If two or more regions pass a final scheme stage, the winner will be decided at random. If stability, authority, or treasury hits zero and a final scheme stage passes at the same time, the scheme takes priority. If a rebellion ends with a rebellion win and a final scheme stage passes at the same time, the scheme takes priority. The monarch can only win in ambition events, which will appear after you've acquired an error. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, Two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The thrice-cursed king is still refusing to sell us any public land. It makes sense. The treasury is not exactly suffering right now. Patience, my friend. Let's bide our time until the king's gold runs out. The patrician's aim is to lower the treasury to 1,500 or less. Tax time! Oops! Sorry, Barons. We're going to help out the Patricians a little with a bribe. And uh, you know what? I'll take some extra from the Counts, too. Thank you. They're all rich, Bear. I know, I know. Trust me, I see. I see what's happening over here. Right. The Count sells unused tracts of land to the Adventurer's Guild for 500 wealth. All right. 
Your tax literally took away money I didn't have. You have negative dollars? Let's go check in on you. Oh, yeah. A few goose eggs down here in the Barrens. My goodness. Something something wealth redistribution. Devotion. Your Serene Highness, ignore everything I said about the songstress. I was completely wrong. This is immediately concerning. I hired her for a private performance to see what all the fuss was about, and by the ninth, I've never heard anything so beautiful. I was so moved, I immediately gave her all my money and the keys to my villa. It solved itself. Red War Machine has completely emptied their coffers. Wait, what? Yes, I'm living in the servants' quarters now, but it was worth it to hear her sing. You simply must invite her to the palace for a performance. Your Majesty, this is deeply suspicious. This is an understatement. What should be done about the songstress enchanting members of the council? Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Hmm. If I veto, it would have to, I think I have to veto the assassin here. Because not only do I not want to increase defiance, I don't want to lose money from my treasury. Oh boy. This, this is concerning. Invite the songstress for a palace at the private uh, private show at the palace? Honestly, it seems like we might be selecting an option that lets the songstress win. I think we're choosing songstress victory. Which I'm curious to I'm I'm curious to watch that play out. Look at the alliance between the counts and the patricians here, man. Fully negating the effect of the barons. Voting is closed. Better than the barons winning, yeah. Wow, that was a significant decrease to uh, defiance. Are you sure this is wise, your majesty? Quiet, you! The council has spoken! Your chancellor extends an invitation to the songstress for a performance in your palace. It is graciously accepted. You can't wait to see what all the fuss is about. Uh, no, I, I feel like I could probably wait. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm anticipating an emptying of the treasury very soon. Your Highness, my researchers have uncovered something fascinating. We discovered the location of a bee charm. It should bring the bees back from the coast. By all the glitters, get on with it then. We're cowering in our homes to hide from these horrid swarms. That's no way to live. We haven't found the charm yet, but it's said to be hidden in a ruined monastery. My soldiers are coming through it now. Calm. Okay. Yeah, more bee puns, please. What monastery? I've never heard of. The monastery once belonged to the Order of the Conquering Blade. The what? They're long dead, High Inquisitor. Your forebears made sure of that. Because they were demon worshippers. This ruin must be destroyed immediately. It's too dangerous to stand. But this is part of Eastern heritage. It's not our fault they had some dubious practices. Besides, we need this charm. I'm with Cuckles. Without the charm, we'll be terrorized by the bees forever. The council hall descends into argument as the three of them make demands. You call a vote to settle things down. What should be done with this ruined monastery of long-dead demon worshippers? Never mind the demon stuff. Find the bee charm. Loot the whole place. There's bound to be valuables there. Oh my god. Or destroy the monastery altogether. It's too dangerous. Hmm. You know what? Call for unity. Let's see where this falls. Damn! 
It almost feels like that's an evenly split the boat but split the vote button for me. Barons are at least unified in their approach here. I suppose it does make sense to have this play out this way. It's a vote for irony, yeah, exactly. Well, it was close. Never mind the demon stuff. Find the bee charm. The High Inquisitor sweeps out, tight-lipped and furious. Rumors start to spread that she has sent Inquisitors in disguise to the east to snoop around. Meanwhile, Cuckle's vassals return from their expedition with the charm. To everyone's relief, the bees quickly return to the eastern hives. Defiance significantly reduced. Nice. Your Majesty, you are, of course, the greatest king of this century. What do you want? Your Majesty, I seek only to tell you the truth as I see plain. Gaslight Drake. Wow, what a name for this, huh? But your power could be even greater. Death comes for us all. But what if we didn't have to? Or what if it didn't have to? What if you could be the greatest king for all millennia? That sounds sacrilegious. Perhaps it is, Your Majesty. But perhaps it's simply making use of the opportunities the Ninth God provides. If you are strong enough to take them. Ah, appealing to my toxic masculinity. There's no better way. I can arrange more meetings so that we may discuss this matter further. The door bursts open. Ah! So he got to you first. No matter. The Counts have agents everywhere and they've been building up your strength, but there's something more sinister afoot. Their ultimate aim is to, re to recruit you into a cult of immortal blood drinkers. Oh, cool. What a tale. All we want is to help the king. Is this true? Of course not. Well, well, he says it's not true, so. This is heresy of the highest order. The council must know. How can the Eastern cult sniffing around the king be stopped? Swing votes. Force the monarch to officially refuse to join this cult. Prevent the counts from seeking private audience with the king. Delay scheme for a single season. Or leave the counts to their business. Swing votes, I think, are actually going to be critical here. Oh, this is hilarious. Swing vote totally cheats this against the counts. As all the barons and patricians need to do is determine which one they need to agree upon. And lo and behold... Force the monarch to officially refuse to join this cult. The nobles leave you no choice. You sign a statement saying that you're not interested in immortality. Not one bit. That seems pretty definitive. I signed it on a piece of paper. Therefore, it must never be allowed to happen. While playing a game of chess in an austere castle, two counts of the East discuss their schemes against the crown. Most pleasing. The king is drunk with power. He's mandated statues of himself be built in every major city. Our sculptors are doing well, I hear. Trade is now wealthy in the East. Better still, it means the time is ripe. But I was thinking, should we really show the king the true secrets of our group? I thought that was the point. Immortality and all that. Yes, but those secrets are meant to be, well, kept secret. What if we pulled the wool over his eyes? Should the Counts truly induct the King into their secret society? Plan a false immortality ritual for the King that will kill him? Lower their own defiance? Or induct the King into the real secret society of immortal blood drinkers? Looking to raise their own farming. What do you think, Taffy? Hello. Hello, bud. What you doing for me? Oh, such a sweet girl. 
Hmm. What do you think? You can lay right there. I guess I did put a guitar in your bed, didn't I? Come on. Open it. Come on. Why? What are you doing? What are you doing, baby girl? This is your sweet baby. Wanna get in the bed? What do you think? You just gonna hang out? All right. It's up to you. I gotta, I gotta stay here. You seem to think I'm gonna be following you out of the room, and I can't. I gotta become the king of the castle, Taffy. Don't you want to be king of the castle? Queen of the castle? Very well. We must prepare for the ritual. I'll begin appeasing the spirits of the soil. But first, we must enrich our lands. By the blood of the dead, it won't be long now. The counts must raise their farming to at least ten. Goodness. Time to tweak the laws. We can stop the count, monarch's vote, and anonymous voting. Hmm. Stop the count does seem fun. Yeah, I feel like anonymous voting is kind of pointless. Yeah, unity hasn't done me much good. We'll do stop the count just for fun. Keep y'all on your toes. Panic in the council! Your Majesty, I bring bad news from the march. We're receiving reports of, I'm sure your news can wait says Premier user Count Agavor. I bring urgent tidings from the East that demand the King's attention at once. Wait your turn, you ignorant dolt. Why don't you sell your quarrel outside? Meanwhile, I have news from the coast that really is urgent. God, you're all giving me a headache. Order in the march has broken down, my liege. Some battalions have killed their own officers and begun roving the wilderness acting like common bandits. Is that all? By the blood of the dead, the eastern courts are corrupt, your grace. Judges are letting off the vilest criminals in return for the slightest bit of coin. My news is worse still. The industries of the coast are in grave danger. The workers are striking. They demand fewer hours and higher pay. All these problems have arisen because the kingdom is increasingly unstable, your majesty. Something must be done. What do you suggest? Unfortunately, we lack the resources to tackle all these problems at once. We must vote on which matter to prioritize. Hmm. We can't help everyone. Hunt down the outlaws and deserters in the march. Reform the eastern courts. Break up the strikes along the coast. We can decrease the baron's military. Ooh. Can also decrease trade for the counts. That doesn't really do much. Decrease trade for the patricians as well. Hmm. Well. I don't think I need to do much here, to be honest. Yeah, this one seems, uh... Seems like a pretty straightforward choice. Wish I had Unity still, man. Of course, the, m the moment that I get rid of Unity... All of a sudden, everyone's in total agreement. Hunt down the outlaws and deserters in the march. Thanks to a helpful snitch, your marshal discovers the locations of all the outlaw hideouts in the march. Over the next month, the deserters are subjected to swift public trials, followed by even swifter public executions. The army is depleted, but much more disciplined. The crisis in the march has been quashed, making the kingdoms as a whole slightly more stable. But the nobles of other regions feel that you're ignoring their problems. Defiance. Increased. Very concerning, actually. 
I must speak with you urgently. Remember how Count Cuckles went poking around in the heretical monastery of the Conquering Blade? This can only end well. The bee charm they found did bring back the bees, but at what cost? It began with buzzing in Cuckles' castle walls. At first it was only at night, but then it grew so loud the servants couldn't hear themselves think. Then honey began dis uh, dripping from the stone walls. Villagers started disappearing. Horrible things are afoot. Cuckle strides into the council hall, wide-eyed. There's a strong smell of honey around them. I assure you I am perfectly fine. That's what someone who's perfectly fine says upon entering the room. This person is clearly touched by unholy forces. Chaos breaks out. In a moment of quiet, you call a vote. How should the council handle the High Inquisitor's concerns about Count Cuckles? Huh. This seems problematic. Have the High Inquisitor test Cuckles. Search Cuckles' estate. Or this has been blown completely out of proportion. Oh, boy. Huh. Do I need to veto something here? Lower defiance is good. Yeah, actually, I think I need to veto this. Otherwise, I might be in trouble. I can't decide what I want to see here. It is always fun to roll the dice on a 20% chance. But those other effects are pretty good. It would be the best for all of this to just blow over. Plus, plus one. I know we are giving them the farming. There's not, not much I can do about that, though. The lone rebellious count. Bravery. This has simply been blown out of proportion. I believe if you do that without the uh, plus symbol, Kaz, I think that might mess with it. The High Inquisitor is furious, and priests preach about the dangers of demonic influence. Peasants grow worried, and many avoid Count Cuckle's lands altogether. Heathens among the Counts! And stability has grown unstable again. But bees love the place. More and more swarm, forming dark clouds around the castle towers. The honey harvest thrives as thick sweetness hangs in the air. They got it. They freaking got it. When Cuckles attends the council, they talk with just a hint of a buzz forever after. Man, maybe I should have vetoed that. Maybe we can find a way to lower the farming here somehow. Your Serene Highness, the songstress has arrived. She's just tuning her lyre, and then she'll perform for us all. A few minutes later, the songstress sweeps into the council hall. She carries herself with incredible confidence and immediately begins to pluck out a tune. Her music is the most beautiful thing you've ever heard. Your cheeks are damp with tears. The marshal begins sobbing. Even the spy master hides her face in her hands. Once I was a nobody, but now you'll kneel before me. Order the palace watch to arrest her. Your knees buckle and you find yourself kneeling before her. The rest of the council follow suit without hesitation. It wouldn't be treachery to show me your treasury. Well, that's a great rhyme. Not gonna lie, break free of the enchantment. As soon as you try, the thought vanishes immediately from your mind. Sorry, did you say something about wanting to see my treasury? You show her down to your treasury and help her shovel gleaming piles of gold into some special sacks that she brought for the occasion. How clever of her. Now forget this day completely to wrap this up all neatly. Forget everything that just happened. You go to bed with a raging headache. When you wake up the following morning, the past 24 hours are a blur. 
It's a shame the songstress never arrived. I was looking forward to her performance. Me too. I suppose we can't afford such pleasant diversions right now, given the recent burglary. Oh well. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet. To what do I owe this pleasure, Madam Treasurer? Oh, give it a rest. You know why I'm here. Let's just hurry this up, shall we? Where do I sign? Here and here and here. There you go. You've got what you wanted. Of course. Goodbye, Madam Treasurer. Did my eyes deceive me? Was that the royal treasurer you were speaking with? Indeed, my friend. Good news. With the king's gold running out, the treasurer was willing to sell off the kingdom's roads and bridges. Soon this kingdom will be ours. But what will we do when we own everything? How should the patricians make use of their kingdom-wide monopoly? Yeah, you've already lost is the thing. I'm proceeding to your third stage here. Feel free to vote on it, though. Yeah, these are both pretty rough. Raise stability, lower authority. Yeah, either one of those would be pretty rough to do. Got to get authority down. It's a four. Yeah, that would have been tough. These upstarts claiming the right to the crown. End season. The Eternal Monarch. It's a bright morning. You're enjoying your breakfast when a letter arrives from Count Gaslight Drake inviting you to his keep. Encoded in the letter, you recognize the symbol of the Count's secret society along with a hidden message. Your heart quickens. In exchange for control of your throne, you shall live forever. This is it. It's time for your eternity to begin. Your wife sits in silence as usual, rustling through her own letters. When you catch her eye, she simply looked away with a curled lip. Have a good day, dear. Humph. That's all the response you'll get. For your voyage to the east, you decide on a modest carriage with fast horses. Best not to be seen on your way. It's nightfall when you arrive, and Count Gaslight Drake hurries you inside, down cold stone steps to the cellars. You blink in the darkness. What happens now? His teeth glimmer in the dark. This is your moment, your majesty. The others await. You follow him into a wide chamber lit with dozens of candles. A circle of sigils is daubed on the floor with something thick and dark. Looking at the shape sends shivers down the back of your neck. There's a strange quality to the stone as you walk. With each step, it feels as though your foot is sinking. When, yet when you look down, the floor is as solid as ever. Robed figures surround the circle. Their faces are hidden, but as they chant, their voices echo as though the chamber is much larger than it appears. Welcome, welcome. The spirits are with us this night. We are to ascend the throne in exchange for, for providing our illustrious king eternal life. This won't hurt, will it? A little pain is nothing compared to eternity, your grace. Dark Gabo helps you into the middle of the circle. The hair on your arms prickles unpleasantly. The chanting rises. As the counts pass a gold chalice around the circle, each one takes a sip. Count Dark Gabo hands it to you solemnly. The chalice is filled with blood. Drink, your majesty, and be fortified. You shall live forever. I don't usually drink blood, but all right. You hold the chalice to your lips and drink. It's warm, metallic, and has an odd, smoky aftertaste. Not the most pleasant thing you've drunk, but not the least, either. As you stand there in the circle, your arms tingle. Your head swims, and you stagger. Stand firm, your grace. Immortality! Eternity! Blood! The air in the chamber thickens, and a red, swirling mist rises from the stones. Chanting fills your ears and heat streams through your veins. Something dark that you can't quite see closes down upon you from the ceiling, settling on your shoulders before fading somehow into you. 
the crown, the throne. It feels so distant now. Mediocre. Small. Zemuel of the East is welcome to it. Your reign is over. But your immortal life has only just begun. For immortality, King Bear was happy to give up the throne. He retreated to a dark sanctum in the east, joining the Elder Counts in hiding from the Inquisitors in the sun. The Barons withdrew support, and the wave of popular momentum behind General Victor petered out. He's soon just another bitter old soldier, ranting that he could have been the king. The patricians' attempt to buy the kingdom ended in failure. Bankruptcies were filed. Marks were scratched in secret ledgers. The risk-reward calculus wasn't favorable. Perhaps next time. Before abdicating, King Bear made it very clear that Zemuel was the legitimate heir. The other nobles could never work out how the counts had pulled it off. Meanwhile, in the east, a secret society was expanded by one member. You specifically wrote down that you wouldn't do that. How could I go back on my word? For shame, Bear. There's me. Wealthiest noble, Dr. Guess Who. Poorest noble, Dapper Dogman. You weren't the only poor Baron. I know that for a certainty. There's our final kingdom stats. Very nice. This is a delight. I like this a lot. You may now continue a game where you can continue the story of your dynasty. Let's do it again. Your second game will include dynasty events, which conclude, continue the story of the previous events. Your nobles will return to their previous regions and keep their wealth. Cool. You can also export your save games for other players to import and play on the continue dynasty screen. Cool. And they're storing on the server. That's neat. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break while we allow folks to rejoin here. And I'm going to go refill my coffee. But I believe, yeah, if you uh, rejoin, you'll be uh, re-entered to your previous group with the, uh, with the money that you had. So yeah, if you want to be a broke baron again, feel free to rejoin. And I will be back momentarily.
Taffy girl. Taffy girl. I don't know what to do when my mama's not here, so I'll just follow you around. I'm confused. Good babe. Can I change my grouping being account is too dark for me? <laughs> I don't think you can, unfortunately. I think you're just set with what you get. A uh, king's a mule, that's right. So I'm not going to be the monarch anymore. Does that mean I join one of the... One of the regions? That would be interesting. Well, we'll find out. Oh, I'm just king's a mule now? Oh, okay. I just changed my name. All right. Well, let's continue then, I suppose. Round two here. Same, uh, same teams, right? Maintain their wealth over there in the patricians. Let's run it back. King Zemuel, you may have won the throne from King Bear, but you must still answer to the council. As is tradition, they will decide what happens at your coronation. Let's change into our waterproof robes. Okay, so I suppose throw the king into the river is a returning option. L.A. Dan! Thank you for the four months. Welcome on back in. I'm here to make terrible choices for this land and its, its, and its inhabitants. You're among like minds. Hell, I'll vote for throw the king in the river. It's tradition, apparently. Uh, why is the vote not working? What the heck? Uh-oh. Hold on. Hold on. It's not working. I don't think the join is working either anymore. I feel like something broke. Hang on. We gotta... Let me disconnect and reconnect real fast. One second. Um... Well, hold on. Maybe if I just continue and then it'll let people reconnect. If I load the game again, and then you guys can join now, maybe that'll do it. The Greenfield. With the 32 months, get him some bear hugs while you're joining up again, please. Thank you for the resub, appreciate it. Maybe it was just because I idled for too long. Maybe there's something that messes with, uh, messes with it with that. Yeah, again, exclamation point join followed by your pronoun. That'll get you in the list. And it is it should be putting you back in the same faction still, yeah. If you uh, played in the previous round. All right, and of course. Folks can continually join through the course of the game, so feel free to keep joining up here. Okay, so it didn't actually do the coronation. So let's see if it'll let us do the vote this time. I'll even monarchs vote the king and the river again. Here we go. Now it's working, yay. 
Require that everyone wear black and listen to dreary Eastern music. I didn't even see that. That's kind of fun, too. Although that is just objectively bad for me, I just realized. Maybe I shouldn't encourage that one. Let's throw the king in the river. Hooray! It is decided. The king will be thrown in the river. And so it begins. The nobles pick you up and carry you out to the Treadwater River, hurling you into the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back up the bank, soaking wet, the chancellor steps forward and places the crown upon your head. Is it your imagination or are some of the nobles stifling giggles? Why would they be stifling them? This is the perfect opportunity to giggle. Hey, Council Taladium. I, I like this look. Did you customize the skull? I appreciate that. Events have proceeded exactly according to plan. The throne is ours. Now just remember our agreement. In all matters of state, you shall favor the east. I'm king now. You can't push me around. I'm merely reminding you of where your loyalties lie. Now introduce yourself to the rest of the council. But don't forget what I told you today. Pleasure, your august majesty. I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. What does that mean? I don't think I've ever heard... Is, that, is the word August meant to be a, like a modifier, like like royal or, or prestigious or something like that? Okay. August. Oh, like Caesar. Okay, 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 got it. Hail and well met, your majesty. Under your leadership... We'll ship this kingdom into sh we'll whip this kingdom into shape. Hmm? With that, the introductions are complete. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices. Meanwhile, what do you think? Another premier user. Will he be a good little king and do as he's told? Too early to tell, but I have a bad feeling. We should have a backup plan just in case. This feels so cool. To have it really, I mean, it's such a silly thing, I know, but it's totally working for me to have this like be y'all represented in game. Do do do. Path to victory. The history books do not look kindly upon usurpers. Unless, of course, they prove themselves worthy of the throne they have stolen. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Hmm. Well, seems like farming will be pretty easy. I think that just means we have to have the counts farming up. Trade might be good, too. As the architect of a new golden age. A lofty goal, indeed. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's overall trade as much as possible. Okay. Okay. Once you have an heir, I'll return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Sweet. Got to improve trade across the board. Okay. Can do. Emmy of the Lemurak bloodline, notorious martyr trapper, stands before a blazing hearth, roaring with arms outstretched. When have the barons of the march backed down from a fight? Never! I know you'll do whatever it takes to put me, your rightful queen, on the throne. What scheme should the barons pursue to overthrow the new king and place their preferred claimant, Emmy, on the throne? Exclamation point vote for A, B, or C. Modernization being to lower others' military. Propaganda will lower stability. Gunpowder for lower authority. And not too shocking here. Baron's taking advantage of the uh, authority being fairly low out of the gate. The Republic of Kurth has this substance called gunpowder. With enough of that, the Barons could take over the kingdom. Of course, a sensible king would never allow one region to hoard such a thing. 
To do so secretly, the barons must ensure their trading partners don't fear the king's wrath. To advance their scheme, the barons must lower authority to four or less in two seasons. Oh, that seems tough. Destimena of the Diets of Nyats dynasty. <laughs> Legendary former hermit. Leans delicately on a podium. My fellow counts, we put King Zemule on the throne. But it seems he's forgotten that already. Don't you think I'd make a better ruler? What scheme should the counts pursue and place their preferred claimant Desdomina on the throne? Who is apparently Diets of Nyat's daughter? That's amazing. Even more, like, in-game integration of the Twitch integration? Integration, 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 exception. They're going for the highest farming, which is not at all surprising either. The Count's plan to summon an ancient famine demon that will devastate all other regions, paving a clear path to the throne. First, they must ensure the East can withstand a famine. To advance their scheme, the Count's must be the region with the highest farming in four seasons. Ar 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 Irina? Of the Jaw Cruncher family. Powerful coastal elder scribbles with a well-used quill on a hardwood desk, muttering in frustration. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of King Zemule. Something must be done. Your cousin Irina. Cousin Irene. Uh, I swear I'm the king. Good God. That was so good. Great work, bear. Good joke. Man, that made me happy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm peaked, dude. I, I, I'm not getting any funnier today. There you go. Don't listen to the songs, Tris, anymore, yeah. Raise the stability. The patricians plan to hold the king hostage in his own palace. First, they must lull the spy master into a false sense of security. Must raise stability to five or more. Well, these are pretty straightforward. Off to the laws of the land. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain plus 500 personal wealth. Huh. Nobles must vote for their least favorite option, and the option with the least votes will pass. Yep. Let's fuck ourselves up. Yeah, that's gonna be a mess. Pure freaking chaos. Can King Bear return to the throne? I don't think so. I don't think I exist anymore in this world. Unless I'm just like hanging around in the council list somewhere. I do? Oh, right. Yeah, I'm immortal. I forgot. Maybe I'll come back in an event or something. That'd be neat. Baroness, glad for you. Your Majesty, it's our honor to invite you to the Lord's Hunt next year. The hunt will be taking place in late spring, so keep your schedule clear. Hmm. Ooh. I could increase my authority, I bet, by banning the hunt. What? I'm sorry, did I mishear you? Ban hunting? Ban hunting? Ban hunting? Surely you jest. I'm not joking. And I'm calling a vote right now. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Prepare for the fight of your life, you tiny brain tyrant. The barons are enraged. Holy shit. <laughs> I can veto don't ban hunting. Ah! 
Eat it. Don't even abstain. Vote for it, Barons. Just accept. Accept your defeat, and I'll accept mine immediately afterward. Due to the defiance. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Leave it right there. Ah, oh, goddammit. Ban hunting for sport. How could this happen? We won't tolerate this. Just you wait and see. With the ban of sports hunting, a quarter of the March's economy becomes illegitimate overnight. Holy shit. That did indeed raise our authority. Oh my god. The barons are furious and so are the peasants, whose feudal overlords are suddenly full of spite and with a lot more time on their hands. There were reports in the march of peasants being flogged for minor crimes. Without hunting as an outlet for the nobility, the march has become a much more dangerous place for the common folk. My liege, a blacksmith in the march has come up with some sort of printing contraption. Instead of relying on the painstaking effort of scribes, it produces a hundred copies of a text an hour. Books, how boring. By the ninth, my liege, don't you see the potential? This could prove a most profitable investment. Don't you see how dangerous this is? Says Teresa Shiho. Books should stay in churches and universities, or else commoners will start getting ideas. Should the council suppress this dangerous new technology? Allow the printing press to be used by the masses. Only the church may use the printing press. Only the university may use the printing press. Forbid the use of printing presses altogether. Reverse voting. <laughs> Chaos! See how you decide to handle this. You're confused? Me too. I don't know what I'd do. We're about to find out what happens, though. Forbid the use of printing presses altogether? So be it. By the ninth, this is un- <laughs> This technology could change the world. The barons are pissed. Aye, that's what we're afraid of. The blacksmith who first invented this infernal machine is hauled before the council in irons. Your prototypes will be smashed to pieces. Your blueprints will be burned to ash. And you will never speak of this so-called printing press again. As a society, we are the most backwards thinking group in existence. We opted to like fully engross ourselves in the spell of the songstress. We wanted to murder all of the bees in order to solve that problem. New technology? Fuck that! Destroy it! Heresy! Y yes, my lord. No, I'm lumping you in on it. It's a we, goddammit. The blacksmith's invention is soon destroyed and forgotten. Scribes across the kingdom can practice their calligraphy in peace. After the dust settles, though, you hear that a few stray blueprints survived. Apparently, Baron Joven Noble hid them and sold them overseas for a fortune. You're rich, Joven. Well, I'm fucked. As is tradition, each region offers a selection of elite guards. The Counts with Knights of the Order of the Drowned Rose, the Patricians with Champion Gladiators, and Barons offer the battle-hardened veteran soldiers. The King knows better than anyone that our Knights will keep him safe from danger and from improper grammar. That immediately makes me want to hurl you into the river, actually. I need to, uh, I'm pretty sure I just need to take the Coastal Gladiators. I don't really have a choice here. 
or sorry, not the Coastal Gladiators, the uh, the Barons, the March. Gotta lower that defiance, dude. Drakov's bones, your highness. How could you choose them? It was the only one that made any sense. Surround yourself with barons. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be great. They march into the throne room in perfect formation. I mean, I was already basically boned, right? So let's just go ahead and welcome it. Auction time. Theater will decrease authority. Thieves Guild will decrease trade. Cathedral will increase faith. Fortress will increase military. Deer Park will decrease farming. And the library will increase stability. To contribute funds, exclamation point fund, followed by the letter selection for the building you'd like to contribute to and the amount that you'd like to contribute. And again, I believe when we're talking about these specific region ones that it is only applied to those groups. Like the Counts would be the only one to benefit from this faith and this military, for example. Yikes. Wow, that was close. Very close. But that will increase the military for the Counts. Wolf Wall, the biggest contributor for the Counts. Sammy O. Helping out with the library here and increasing the stability. One or more regions are able to rebel. Is their defiance status higher than both authority and stability? If the rebels get more victory points than the loyalists, they'll win the game. If the loyalists get more victory points than the rebels, they'll put down the rebellion and continue the game. If multiple regions rebel and win, a vote between the two rebelling regions will, with the highest stats will determine the successor. Rebelling regions have their schemes paused. Regions with a high military stat are more likely to overthrow the monarch. If stability, authority, or treasury hit zero, the rebels will win the civil war. Okay. So hold on, is this... I don't think there's anything happening here. Right? I think I just end season. Or is this a vote? Nothing for you guys, right? Okay. Ah, here we go. This is where you need to vote. Rebellion led by that one otaku gal. Looking likely. Barons rebel next season. If defiance remains above authority and stability. So be it. Your Majesty, it's important you find a spouse sooner rather than later. Give me anything. It's an easy enough decision. You'll marry into the Counts as we agreed before you took the throne, right? Right? Anakin meme. Beached whale. Did you always have that eye patch? Did Zemuel? That's a good question. I didn't notice. Lost gerbil. Your esteemed highness, a great big whale washed up on the coast right outside my villa. However, before I could order my servants to harvest its blubber, a thin folk crawled up onto the sand. It begged me for an audience with the king. I've always wanted to meet one of the denizens of the sea. Your hopes are fulfilled when a frog-faced, green-skinned man waddles in, his flippers slapping against the marble. Your Majesty, you must not allow Lady Patrician Lost Gerbil to kill Sophia. Sophia is a wise and gentle whale, a great friend of the fin folk. In what way is this whale your friend? She keeps the sharks away, banishes our gloom with her beautiful songs, and provides us with her bounteous milk. Ew. Please return her to the waters where she was born. 
Or, and hear me out, your serene highness, we could strip down the whale to its component parts and make a fortune. Who cares what these fish-faced fools think? I imagine maybe some of us do. Slaughter and harvest the whale. Increase our treasury. Our, our trade, which would certainly be good for my objectives. Return the whale to the fisher folk will increase defiance and farming. The whale will make a fine trophy in the king's throne room. Hmm. Well, then all I can do. Hunting is banned. So for them to even have the option should be illegal. Yeah, that ain't too surprising. Such kind souls in the bear pile. See, the thing was, I was considering vetoing that. And I was like, the only, re the only possible result from me vetoing B is the entire pile choosing C out of spite. So, opted to avoid that, I guess. How could you take the fishmen's side over your own citizens? Thank you, your majesty. The finfolk owe you a great debt. Using a crane and team of oxen, the great whale is lifted and placed upon wooden rollers. Without ceremony, it is plopped back into the ocean, where it splashes its tail and sprays water in apparent gratitude. From that point on, coastal fishermen report that their catches have nearly doubled. The grateful fin folk literally herd fish toward their nets. Wow. All right, then. A curious curse. Oh, not again. <laughs> I can't. Fine, whatever. Recommit. I must infuriating circumstances befallen me. I've been cursed by a sea wizard. He inflicted me with these gills. So I can't leave the water for more than a couple of minutes. I want a tannery blooding some picturesque beach he likes. How is that supposed to know? I demand to arrest this maniac and force him to remove these gills. Hmm. Lower military. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll just go for a normal vote here. Not much I can do. I'm curious what the result of a polite request might be. Look at the coordination here, man. My goodness. A polite request. Soon enough, the sea wizard, who appears to be a mix between Hagrid and Gandalf, uh, appears before the council. As he walks in, seawater sloshes at his feet, welling up from the ground itself. What do you want from me? We need you to reverse the curse afflicting noble patrician Ratoffel. He does have a crab hand. And why would I do anything like that? That tower is one of my favorite beach. I don't curse for nothing. Hmm. Ooh, I get to choose. Let's see. Noble Patrician Ratoffel can stay a fish person for all I care. I'll order them to shut down the stupid tannery, which I don't want. You know what? I'll, I'll give you a thousand gold, buddy. How about that? Yeah, I come to think of it, the coast is long and winding with many hidden beaches. 
The wizard's flesh bulges. <sighs> Can't unsay that. Suddenly turns to water, splashing down in your corridor. He's left you with quite a cleanup job. Melba Patrician Ratoffel appears in the council hall a few days later. Back to their old self. Though they have a case of the hiccups that persist for several months. Looks like we're uh, getting rebelled on, y'all. Amidst dark and foreboding forests, a small squat castle stands watch over the marcher border. There, at the end of the kingdom, a plot is hatching. Have the merchants from Kurth arrived with the gunpowder? Not yet. They still fear the king's reprisals, not to mention their own government. Then our work is not done. We need to weaken King Samuel's grip. The Baron's aim is to lower authority to four or less. Oh, can they not do the rebellion with the authority this high? Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, we can't adjust their tax, though. Oh, they are still rebelling. Okay, okay. That's just their plot thingy. Gotcha. Well, sorry, Counts. I need some money. Same with you, Patricians. Thanks. The kingdom is in rebellion. The first side to earn five victory points will win. Victory points are earned through events. If the rebels are victorious, the monarch is overthrown. I did tax my protectors just now, but only with the knowledge that they still have to side with me anyway. Which I'm sure will bite me in the butt later. But for now, I'm good. I have found two potential matches for you. Obviously, the ongoing rebellion has limited our options. In any case, I have found an eligible young candidate from each of the kingdom's loyal regions. You're in desperate need of securing an alliance right now. Choose wisely. The Chancellor leads you to the Great Hall where they've arranged two portraits on an easel. The first portrait... Nicholas, the eldest son of the Eastern Doobie Man dynasty. Apparently they've had a hell of a time getting him to smile for this portrait. He had a laboratory installed in his castle and spends most of his time there conducting bizarre experiments. Half of the East are in love with him, apparently, and the other half hate him. He's intriguing. And we have Lucian, the wealthy heir from the noble uh, to noble patrician Dusky Dude's estate. I mean, just look at him. He's gorgeous. Apparently got a silver tongue, too. They keep saying that about the guys with masks on. He loves to lose his fortune betting at the arena, and he's recently been campaigning to improve living conditions in the coastal slums. Could be worse. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll probably go with Nicholas. Or refuse to marry any of them and just make everybody hate me. There we go. The loyal counts. All right. Rebellion. At long last, the barons have reached their boiling point. You're confronted in your throne room by Baron Otter Valinor. Their boots stomping mud all over your nice carpet. That really brought the room together. The barons of the march are sick of your lies and tyranny. We'll give you soft city-dwelling bastards a proper kicking. We'll be fighting for Emmy, the true queen. This is a formal declaration of war. The next time we see each other, we'll be on the battlefield. Seize them! Come along now, traitors get the chop. What? But you can't do this! I'm an envoy! See, see how the king's tyranny grows worse by the day! Treasonous. Your watchmen waste no time. Baron Otter Valinor is dragged out into the courtyard and their head is struck from their shoulders. I didn't expect them to move so boldly, your majesty. Rip Otter Valinor. Enter Otter, Otter, Otter Valinor II. What are the chances against the rebels? The barons are formidable, but not undefeatable. I hope they don't persuade any other regions to join their rebellion. Oops. Oops. Hopefully someone didn't allow for that to happen. Oops. 
The leader of the rebellion is Baroness that one otaku gal. She's citing your past transgressions as reason for the uprising. Your, tyrann your tyrannical suppression of the printing press, your overzealous hunting ban. These, these are perfectly legitimate reasons. Is it too late to say sorry? It is. So this is it, huh? Civil War? There'll be a lot of death and suffering before this is all over. I can't wait. I'll go dig out the trebuchets. There's also that bee cult thing, right? And then the whole, you know, like returning a whale to the fish men. That was kind of weird. Overall, fairly uh, questionable start for you, kings and mule. The time has come. This kingdom has grown soft under the weak and ineffectual rule of King Zemuel. As usual, it's up to the barons to fix things with violence. Let's march to the capital and kick some heads in. All in good time. But we're the barons of the march. Let's live up to that reputation, huh? Let's be clever. But I want to kick some heads! Well, there'll be plenty of that. But first, let's think carefully about where to strike first. We can launch a preemptive strike against the Counts to cripple their military capabilities. If we suspect the Patricians may join our cause, we can call them to war. They'll be more likely to join us if the King's authority is low. We could also call upon the Church to condemn the King. Or finally, you could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. Hmm. Launch a preemptive strike. Call upon the Patricians. Petition for the support of the Church or send an assassin to the king. I don't, I don't have a say in this at all. Looks like the barons are in agreement here to call upon the patricians to join their cause. The barons smuggle a secret message to the patricians. Cunning patricians of the coast. Too long have you suffered under the yoke of the king's tyranny. Join us in our righteous war, and if we win, we'll eliminate your taxes. She speaks truly. Why did we never think of things this way? The patricians are emboldened by the call to rebellion. Of course, they can only act on it if their defiance is high enough. Sure is. Oh, boy. Better get my veto back. Oh, I do have my veto. Hmm. I'll take swing votes back. Sounds good. The kingdom is in rebellion. The royal wedding. The Civil War casts a shadow over your wedding. Instead of being a joyous public holiday, the day arrives without much pomp and ceremony. Still, all your loyal nobles have arrived in the capital to keep up appearances. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's ca Cathedral with Nicholas at your side. Do you take this man as your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And I pronounce you king and husband. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. And after the feast, a dance. Your new husband, Nicholas, refuses to dance at all, preferring instead to brood in the corner. By the time you find yourself alone with Nicholas, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. Did you see the eight crows perched on the church tower as we walked into the cathedral? A dire omen. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Your words don't seem to sink in. Instead, Nicholas bursts into tears. This marriage seems like it was a bad idea. The peasants have the right idea, though. They get married for love, not for politics. Oh, to live the simple life of a commoner. Your life's not so bad. Oh, you don't get it, do you? My life is perpetual misery. And no one understands. Not even my king. Nicholas pulls away from you and retreats to the spare bedchamber, slamming the door. You're left feeling a little depressed and dreading what married life will bring. Divorce speedrun, yeah. I hesitate to remind you, but you are indeed able to vote for the rebellion here now, patricians. Vast armies darken the landscape like the shadows of clouds. Flags are flying. 
Drums are pounding in rhythm with the marching of boots. The kingdom is gripped with civil war. At least, that's what you imagine. Most of your time is spent in the safety of your palace, poring over a giant map with your marshal. Your Majesty, the Army of the March is advancing on the capital, led by that treacherous cur, Baroness that one Ataku gal. I've received word from the commander of our loyalist forces in the coast. If they march now, they'll intercept the barons in a matter of days. Alternatively, they could join forces with the Army of the East. It's risky, but together they'd have a higher chance of defeating the accursed barons. What are your orders, Your Majesty? Tell the patricians to fight the marcher army head on? I don't think that's going to go with, uh, for, uh, well for us. At least if the counts are there, they might have a chance. I'll relay your orders to Lord Patrician Samuel Vision, the commander in the field. Hopefully they do as they're told. God knows treachery can thrive on a battlefield. What a fortuitous omen! Thanks for that, dude! We have our orders, but should we follow them? Let's let the patricians decide. Defy orders and send the coastal army to fight the rebels. Follow orders, link up with the counts, or hang back and let the rebels march on the capital without challenge. Oh, looks like the patricians. Not so confident in the rebellion just yet. Follow orders, they say. I love taxes and the king, yeah. Thanks, simp. The whole city holds its breath. You stew in your palace waiting for your marshal's return. Finally, she arrives at your throne room looking perfectly composed. Your Majesty, as you ordered, the patricians have turned their army around to link up with the Counts. All according to plan. Let's hope the plan is sound. It'll all come down to the next battle, Your Majesty. The fate of the kingdom hangs in the balance. I have a lot to take care of, says the Marshal. Over the next few weeks, it becomes clear that the Coastal Army's retreat has given the Barons free reign to pillage and plunder the coast. The rampaging marcher troops descend on farms like locusts, taking everything to feed thousands of hungry soldiers. The coast is now fertile. Ooh. Meanwhile, shops, churches, and manors are plundered, and the stolen loot shipped back to the march. Trade is now dominant with the barons. Oh my. The redistribution of wealth has finally taken place. The nobles among the barons finally getting their chance to see a little loot. Joven noble. Feeling good. Well, there we go. But while the coast suffers, the coastal forces successfully link up with the counts. Now the joint army of the patricians and the counts rush to meet the barons in open warfare. And the winner will either end your reign or preserve it. Sickness spreads. Your grace, a terrible sickness is spreading among my troops in the east. Get away from me! Calm yourself, your grace. I don't have it. If we let the disease run its course, we'll have lost a lot of soldiers we can't afford to lose. But I'm not sure how much we can do. Perhaps the council can see a way forward. Can't afford to hire a wizard, apparently. How will the council respond to the new illness? Send medical doctors. Quarantine the diseased and order the healthy to leave them behind. Or do nothing. Huh. You know, I think I... I think I actually need to... I think I need to... Well... I was going to say, we might, I might want to veto D. Yeah, I think I need to. So we're either sending the dock or quarantining. Right, yeah, without the military. The barons would have had that. 
Looks like we're emptying the coffers here, which is not too surprising. We'll see what the docks have to do. Oh, Red can't vote. Ah, well, that was stupid then. Oh, well. Didn't even think about that. Rebels can't vote, right? Yeah, makes sense. I know how to treat this sickness, Your Majesty. It's a simple remedy. Garlic, wormwood, and spleen of goat. Oh, and we mustn't forget leeches. Lots of leeches. Of course, gathering enough ingredients to treat a whole army doesn't come cheap. At great expense, you send the best doctors from Quail University out to the east to cure your troops. Hopefully they're worth the money. The doctors get to work with their leeches and bizarre concoctions. Some of your soldiers die, some survive. All in all, though, it appears to be working. You still lose plenty of troops, of course, and at a time when you can least afford to. But after a few weeks, the sickness is defeated. Just barely managed to keep the strength up. Well, I'll take advantage of the opportunity I have now to quell the rebellion. Late at night, two counts meet in an ancient stone cemetery to discuss their schemes against the king. Our grain stores are looking much more impressive than the rest of the kingdom. Yes, and I've had peasants from the march moving onto my lands, desperate to sponge off our prosperity. How delightful. But won't summoning this demon be difficult? It's magic beyond our usual fare. The walls of reality are sturdy, but they can be weakened. The tide of blood must swallow this kingdom in its wake. Chaos. For the next stage of their scheme, the counts must lower stability to four or less. Anchored a few miles away from the sunny coast, Lord Patrician Cleason has invited his closest confidants aboard his yacht. Our plans are going better than expected. The spymaster thinks that all is well in the kingdom. And while the cat's away, the mice shall play. Must you compare us to mice? Dastardly creatures, and I can never trap them properly. Funny you should mention traps. Our next step is to replace the palace watch with our own agents. Indeed. The honor guard is, are incorruptible, but the watch are another story. If the king can't pay them, they'll look for money elsewhere. Yet again, the patricians aim to lower the treasury. Unsurprising. Looking for those VPs still. Patricians still on the verge. A fortress besieged. We must send aid to my friend in the field. Count affordable waffle irons. But I need aid. If you help if you help count affordable waffle irons, I'm sure he'll return the favor. The marcher forces marched through his lands and he holed up inside his fortress. The fortress can withstand a frontal assault, but the rebels aren't stupid enough to try that. They'll besiege count and, and starve him out. You can't let that happen. He's a close friend and always lends me a hand when my farms are struggling. Hmm. Oh, with the Reds being unable to vote here. Swing vote. This seems like a pretty easy C. It'll be a useful distraction for the enemy troops. There we go, there we go. No problem. This is a betrayal. We won't forget this. But we will be cordial about it. Thankfully, Eastern food supplies are plentiful enough that Count Affordable I Waffle Iron survives the siege. Yeah, we got all the food in the world. I ain't gonna do shit to him. A significant portion of the marcher forces are tied up sieging the fortress for months, leaving their other troops with less protection. Uh. Booyah, go loyalists.
Deep in the forest, a group of rebel barons have gathered to discuss the civil war. With them are their spies. A cluster of nondescript marcher citizens in ordinary clothes. Hail, friends. Be sure to get a drink and make yourselves comfortable. Great God. Hard to be comfortable when that tyrant King Zemuel sits on his throne, eh? That's precisely why I invited you here. We know the counts are in the king's pocket. But are there peasants? I know for a fact that Countess Raven Twins' farms are thriving. But is the bounty shared with the ordinary people of the East? Our spies should spread the word. We'll be kinder to the peasants than Countess Raven Twin and her corrupt compatriots. Huzzah! Let us decide how to proceed. Barons of the March vote only. How can the barons bring loyalist peasants to join the rebel cause? Promise riches to those who move or enlist from the East. Set aside bountiful farmland. Give a huge amount of actual money to march or army recruits. Or use the spies to improve our tactical military position. Do, 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 do. The power of actual real money. Money that's yours specifically, indeed. Trusted spies pour into the east, spreading word about the generosity of the barons. There goes all your gold. It's not long before the plan bears fruit. Droves of peasants make a dangerous trek to the march. A golden glint in their eyes. As the troops clean their weapons, make repairs, and heal their wounds, one thing's for sure. They'll soon have a chance for some action. Hopefully there will be enough of the kingdom left for them to enjoy once this is over. Time for the final battle, apparently. A month ago, battle was averted. But that battle cannot be postponed forever. The patricians and counts are all that stands between the barons and the capital. A final battle deciding the fate of the kingdom. I'll send word to the Counts that it's time to strike. We can only hope they listen to our orders, Your Majesty. Oh boy. Open to Counts of the East only. Do you send the joint forces of the Counts and Patricians to fight the rebels? Or hang back and let the Barons march on the capital without challenge? Overwhelming support for the joint forces. Lone traitor Schneedelbach. Send the forces. Success! She strides into your throne room with a triumphant gleam in her eyes. Let's see here. What took you so long? I came as quickly as I could, Your Majesty. We caught the barons by surprise as they were fording a river. Classic pincer movement. The counts attacked from one side and the patricians charged in from the other. You should have seen it. The river ran red that day. An utter slaughter. Loyalists gain three victory points. Authority now commanding in the military. Dismantled for the barons. This calls for a glass of wine. No, a bottle. Your marshal happily accepts a drink and you clink your glasses together. As you're taking a celebratory sip, however. Your majesty, we've received word from our scouts. I don't quite know how to say this. Spit it out, damn you. Y yes, ma'am. Your majesty, the barons must have split their forces. The army we defeated was a diversion. They've got another regiment making its way through the Crownlands. They'll be outside the capital in a matter of days. And the Counts are too far away to help. W what do we do? We must prepare for a siege. We've got a lot of work to do. Build up the capital's fortifications, stockpile food. Train up a citizen's militia. But don't worry, Your Majesty. This is the last ditch ploy of a defeated enemy. We need to outlast the siege, and the Counts will come to our rescue. Well then. Not quite over yet. 
Oh boy. Here's where that personal wealth comes into play. Auction begin. The cathedral will increase faith. The Grand Bazaar will increase trade. Either increase or decrease stability with the library or pi library or prison, respectively. Decrease farming with the deer park. Decreased faith with the observatory. Looks like the uh, primary debate this time going between C and D, which is kind of funny considering the top two are going to be funded. I wouldn't mind it. I would also probably prefer that the library be funded, I suppose. Given that we are looking to increase stability. And instead, absolutely nothing will happen. Oh, never mind. Apparently at the very last second, the Grand Bazaar made it in. Joven Noble, utilizing that extra wealth very effectively, will max out trade for the Barons at the cost of stability. Well, not really at the cost. That's the other effect, I guess. Thanks to Jack Attack. One more victory point for the Loyalists. Rebellion no longer possible for the Patricians. About your heir. Your marriage to Nicholas is not what you'd hoped. He seldom sleeps in your bed, and over breakfast you exchange only a few frosty words before he departs to the laboratory. The last thing on your mind is procuring an heir. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair, but something's still missing. Defeat this rebellion, and then, and only then, is it worth looking to the future, I see. I'll talk to you again when the realm is at peace. Well, all right. Troubling news, your majesty, the Treadwater River has been contaminated. We're not sure how, but with the barons got upstream of us and fouled the water. Ninth only knows with what. Apparently with John the Mon's personal wealth. I'll spare you the details of what's happened to the poor souls who've drunk from it. Rest assured that it is not pretty and very deadly. The Treadwater provides water for the whole city. If this isn't solved soon, we'll all die of thirst. Shall we order the Counts to sneak water supplies into the capital, keep the safe drinking water for the nobles and the army, or continue to drink from the river? Hmm. Well, I feel I ought to probably save my veto. As yet again, it feels like this is one that, for the most part, ought to be a pretty clear choice. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta sneak in them water supplies. Of course, the uh, Baron's still unable to vote here. Yeah, there we go. Heelbot and Shady Shroom. Opting for pure chaos. By the blood of the dead, it will be done. Thank you, Bearbeards. Good name. Good character. The counts are as effective as they are dutiful. Supplies are still rationed, but at least no one is dying of thirst. Sweet. Besieged! The barons march through the crown lands, pillaging and burning. The roads are heaving with refugees and corpses clog the rivers. Now the capital is surrounded. You stand on the ramparts of your palace, staring out in dismay as the army camps stretching for miles across the, or at the army camps stretching for miles outside the city walls. Get down from there, your majesty. If they get lucky with a crossbow bolt, what are we supposed to do? The patricians and the counts are still out there, your majesty. Their combined army smashed the rebels in the last battle, and they can smash them again. I hope they get here in time. The ninth god will decide our fate. 
As you finish your sentence, an immense trebuchet hurls a 10-ton boulder toward the capital. It crashes into a nearby clock tower, smashing it to smithereens. Like I said, Your Majesty, you better get inside. A pair of counts face each other in silence. A code word is exchanged. They speak of their latest schemes. Good news from the capital, my friend. Well, bad news, but good for us. Oh, yes? Fires? Wanton murder? Giant spiders? All that and more. Really? Wow, that sounds chaotic. The fabric between worlds is wearing thin. The time is ripe to summon a demon. Sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't a good honk, I promise. It wasn't worth it. But which honored guest should we invite? Should we invite Ankarazad, Lord of Dismay, the Seventh God's Smile? Or Belfiminar, the Hungering Absence, Queen of Corruption? These are Magic the or, yeah, these are Magic the Gathering cards. These are 100% Magic the Gathering cards. They're, they're Eldrazi specifically. Or Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, also acceptable. Well, unsurprisingly, the Counts are aiming to lower their faith. Ankaraz Ankarazad will never break through while the Church has its claws in the hearts of the people. If we make this kingdom ideal for his presence, he will sweep through the land and leave nothing but grinning corpses. From one of these corpses, we will simply pick up the crown. Faith to one or less. Somewhere along the coast, Lord Patrician Cleason strolls in his olive grove, accompanied by a close friend. Luck is with us, my friend. The palace watch are in our pocket. Some have even agreed to fight on our side when the time comes. Music to my ears. And you had no problems? No, they took our money gladly. The kingdom can barely afford to pay them a living wage. But now we must plan our next steps. What should the patricians do now that they control the palace watch? Lower authority? Or raise their own military? A slightly tougher choice here. Again, just patricians of the coast for this one. Looking to raise the military. Over the next few months, we'll have our troops infiltrate the capital disguised as beggars. They'll swap places with the palace watch one by one. Once the king realizes he's surrounded by our troops, it'll be too late. He'll be a helpless little fly caught in our web. Magnificent. But once we've turned the king into our puppet, won't the counts and barons notice? That's why we need a strong army to make them think twice about challenging us. United with the king's forces, we'll be unstoppable. Seven military for the patricians. Bear, will you be playing this more often? Absolutely. 100% yes, this is great. Hmm, I better just go for a for a common tax on the on the patricians here. They're not tax your very best allies. I think I must, unfortunately. I simply must. Actually, furious. Give me that money. Too low. Oh, wait, it is seven now. I think they might actually be able to rebel now. That'd be funny. Uh, apparently not. Another dawn breaks. The great army of the march sprawls outside your city walls. For the last three weeks, they've tried to fight their way in. The siege drags on and your food supplies are dwindling. 
The streets outside your palace explode in daily riots as the citizens demand to be fed. We are surely doomed. Ah well, all things must come to an end. As evening draws in, horns blast outside the city walls. The barons are mounting a final attack. Geo! Thank you for the nine months. Welcome back in. Bear hugs, please. Kiwi Kenobi! The 77 as well. Appreciate it. Bear hugs for him. Thank you for the resubscriptions. Welcome on back. New law. Ooh. Monarch's iron choice. That sounds like fun. Let me get rid of swing vote. Nice. All right. They are indeed on the verge of rebellion again. Screams in the night. It's an ordinary evening. You're headed toward your bedchamber when a strange noise echoes from outside. It's nothing like the usual clash of weaponry or yelling of troops. Not quite a human scream. Not quite an animal. Something shivers down the back of your neck. Oh boy. Check on your husband. That's adorable. You race through the halls, but Nicholas is nowhere to be found. Then footsteps approach. A cluster of counts stand there, looking extremely pleased with themselves. Nicholas stands with them, smiling. Greetings, your grace. Good morning. Glory to Ankarazad, the seventh god's smile. Glory to Ankarazad, indeed. The fields are bare thanks to our work, your majesty. Serfs all across the kingdom will starve. Unless you do right by them and give in to our demands. Nicholas, how could you? But I'm a count too. Yes, but you've proven a much less pliable puppet than we've hoped. Count Nahay smiles and raises his hand. Your throat tightens and your own mouth stretches into a rigid grin. Ankarazad has this kingdom in the palm of his hand, ready to give it to the rightful queen, Desdemina. You have a choice. Die of old age in exile, or be killed now. Either way, we get the crown. Let me just, let me just grab my crown polish. You rush away, but your body comes to a halt no matter how much you struggle as though bound by invisible chains. Your breath stutters as thin, inhuman laughter echoes in your ears. Your lips curl and grin, completely out of your control. The last thing you hear is the Counts arguing about how the regions will be portioned out. It's some comfort to know that they'll, they're unlikely to settle it peacefully. The Counts are victorious. The evil magic of Ankarazad reduced King Zemuel to a twitching corpse with a ghastly smile. Future monarchs hear the old king's laughter in their nightmares. The barons, led by that one otaku gal, launched a rebellion that accomplished nothing besides distracting the king while cunning schemers took the throne. The patricians' attempt to worm their way into the palace was uncovered, and a number of arrests were made. Lord Patrician Cleason ended his life chained upside down to a dungeon wall. And so the demon Ankarazad did lay waste to the kingdom, and the streets were littered with smiling corpses. And the Counts smiled too, as Queen Desdemina ascended to the throne. Not the best performance out of King Zemuel. Wealthiest noble Raven Dare. Oh, sorry, Gimel. You won, but at what cost? That of all of your personal wealth. Sheesh. Man, I'm not going to lie. We might just want to leave that be for this particular run. That seems like it's going to be a difficult situation to recover from. Maybe we'll just have that be the... Uh, Ankarazad reigns eternally in that realm. Well... This is a whole bunch of fun, isn't it? I really like this. We're definitely going to do this again soon. 